because to be honest, that's what most of us beginners are terrified of, making a fool of ourselves or disappointing team. If you wanna be useful to your team as quick as possible, I'm telling you, defense is where you should put your attention. Hey folks, it's Rach here from Kinda Sporty. I'm gonna tell you the things that I wish someone had told me two years ago when I was starting out as a beginner playing basketball in my 30s. To be honest, there's lots of info out there, but for a beginner, it's really intimidating and kind of scary. And so I found myself just jumping in the deep end, hoping I would figure it out on the fly and having a pretty terrible time. So I'm hoping to save you a lot of heartache and a lot of time. Let's jump into it. Now, when you're getting started with a new sport or a new skill, there are so many elements to cover off. Do you focus on shooting? Do you focus on dribbling? Do you focus on passing or strategies or defense or positions? Where do you go? And it can feel a little bit overwhelming. That's an understatement. It can feel really overwhelming. All right, can I tell you what the first chapter of the fundamentals of basketball in this book are? It's shooting. Do you know what you're not going to be doing a lot of in your first game? Yeah, it's shooting. The reality in basketball, and to be honest, most team sports, is that there are far more players on the court or the pitch than there are balls. And so it just makes mathematical sense that you're going to spend a lot more time without the ball than you're going to spend with it. And so focus on what you should do when you don't have the ball. Just in case you haven't watched my previous video, The Basketball Rules for Beginners, a crash course, make sure you watch that one off before you cover this because it covers some really basic general rules of the game. But if you haven't watched that, then I'll let you in on what defense actually means. So defense is what we call the team that doesn't have possession of the ball in that very moment. So you can be in defense one moment and then switch to offense because your team has stolen the ball and vice versa. It can happen very quickly. The crux of defense is stopping the other team from scoring points. So that's either blocking their shots or intercepting their passes, anything you can do to stop them scoring. Except maybe not that. Defense is the least sexy part of the game. There's no fancy flashy dribbling or mind blowing shots from amazing spots on the court. It's not flashy, but it's where the games are won. So it's so crucial that you have a basic understanding of it so that you become useful to your team really, really quickly. And everyone loves a useful team member. Everyone loves being a useful team member. <laughs> Because to be honest, that's what most of us beginners are terrified of, making a fool of ourselves or disappointing the team. You know, sometimes your team is a group of strangers, so it feels like the stakes are so high, everyone's looking at you. Or maybe you've got a team of workmates or friends who've invited you, and you don't wanna be that person who is losing the game for everyone. Which is not the case, but it's what your insecurities tell you is gonna happen. Just in case you missed it, my name is Rach. I'm an exercise physiologist who is on a mission to make starting sport in your later years less intimidating and way more achievable. I post workout content that's sport specific. I also post funny videos and <laughs> poke fun at myself of all the stupid things I did wrong when I was getting started. So if that sounds like your jam, make sure you follow so that you get the videos first. So there are two different types of defensive strategies. The first is called man-to-man. Man-to-man, -man. it's not very uh, 2023, is it? Person to person. It is the easiest to explain and the hardest to execute. You pick a player and you follow them around the court like a stinky shadow for the entirety of the game. It can be really tricky to keep track of your players, especially in social basketball, where people can sub in and out without any announcement. Whereas if you're playing a more serious league, they will stop play for a sub to come in and come off. It's not commonly used in social basketball because, well, it's hard. <laughs> I didn't say we were here to get fit. Now, zone defense is the most common strategy I have seen in social basketball because it's easier and involves less running. <laughs> It's basically where you split the area of the court that's inside that three-point arc into specific zones that each individual player is responsible for. It's most commonly a two-three split with two players at the top and three players at the bottom. The other zone strategy that I see used the most in social basketball is box and one. So that's where you split the area in the three-point arc into four 
that's your box. And then the one is one of your team members is playing man to man, generally against the other team's best player. And that really requires someone that has the legs and the fitness to run man to man for the whole game. But your team might choose to swap and change between these strategies throughout the game. But now you know what those strategies are. And so if they say, hey, let's play box and one or let's do two, three, then you understand what's going on. So whether you've got a zone to defend or a person to defend, there are two kind of approaches to how you actually play defense. So you've got denial and you've got containment. So denial is where you try and stay between the player you're defending and the ball. And so that means you've got to keep an eye on both of those moving parts. And that can be pretty tricky for a beginner, but staying between them denies your player the opportunity to receive the ball because no one's gonna to pass to that player if they can see that you're right there, ready to intercept it or knock it out of the way. So the second one is probably most commonly used by us social basketball players, and that is containment. This approach is where you try and stay between the player you're defending and the basket. And it's a little bit easier because the basket is obviously not moving, and so it's one less variable to keep a track of. So regardless of if you use denial or containment, there are a few fundamental skills that you're gonna need on the court when you're playing defense. So let's head to the court, shall we, for some practice. Is there a hair tie in here, please? Please, 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 please? I stole it and I never replaced it. <laughs> I really didn't want to do this. Oh well, messy hair, don't care. The first defensive skill that we're gonna work on is our defensive position. How do we hold our bodies when we're in defense? And it's a bent knee, a bent hip, elbows up at 90 degrees and hands open wide. You're trying to take up as much space as you can, creating the biggest barrier between the person you're defending and the basket or the ball, depending on the strategy you're using. So it looks like this, it looks like this. Now the importance of the defensive stance is that the lower and the wider you are, the more stable you're gonna be. So if I'm defending with a narrow stance and I'm standing up high and I'm trying to take up space and someone blows past me and knocks me, it's not gonna take much to take, put me off balance. But if I'm standing really low, really wide, and someone blows past me, I'm gonna be able to absorb that force. Maybe I can correct, but either way, wider is more stable because of the bigger base of support. I tell my elderly clients this all the time because balance is a really big deal when you're 80, 90 years old. So we've got our defensive position, but how do we move from here? And it's all about the side shuffle. You're gonna kick your foot out, step as big as you can, and then bring the other foot in fairly close and do it again. That is how you cover a large distance in this low defensive position. Okay, now I have three really awesome tips for you in defense, and you're gonna to wanna to write these down, so grab some pen and paper. Tip number one, when you are defending someone, keep your eyes on their midsection. They're gonna do all kinds of funky things with their hands, with the ball, with their feet, but I tell you what, their hips are gonna point in the direction that they're gonna move. So you can know which way to go with your big side step. Now your side steps might not be directly to the side. You might have to take them backwards, forwards, keeping that base really wide, really low, it's always a great move. Tip number two is when you're defending a player that you know is faster than you, they blow past you every single time, they're getting straight to the bucket, regardless of your defensive position and keeping eyes on their waist, you're gonna wanna give them space. So if they're coming up towards the bucket, you can give them a little bit of room. All this does is buy you time to be able to react. As long as you're balanced and in that position before they get there, you have every right to be in that position. You won't be called for a foul. And then tip number three is if the person you're defending is more of a shooter, you know they're a shooter because they've already sunk like 10 buckets in the game and you've not even warmed up, then those people, they need pressure. You don't want to give them space because they're just going to shoot, shoot, shoot. So if they're approaching their basket, they've got the ball, you want to come right up close to them, get in their area, get in their space, hands straight up and this is where you make yourself really tall you get out of that defensive position hands up really tall so that you become a difficult barrier to shoot over hard for people like me us little shorties we can only cover so much distance but get up on your tippy toes reach those hands that's all you can do you don't want to be jumping out at them that's not allowed you can jump straight up 
but jumping up and out at them, not okay, because you'll likely make contact with them and be called for a foul. The other element of defense that's really important is rebounding. Rebounding is trying to get possession of a loose ball after it's been shot. And trust me, there are a lot of loose balls bouncing around and lots of rebounds up for grabs. So rebounding is a skill. It's going to be your tallest players who get most of the rebounds just because of their proximity to the ring. If you're a shorty like me, the thing that you're going to do in defense when trying to get a rebound is boxing out. This is going to give you time to react and hopefully get to that ball first. If you're in a defensive position, that ball goes up for a shot, whether it's your person or another team member who shot the ball. Immediately, you're going to spin around, turn your body to face the hoop, and stick your backside out to make contact with your defender. It gives you information as to where their position is. You can feel them with your booty. So you're going to stick your butt out, put it on your player, and watch for where the ball's going. This is gonna buy you time. Now, if your player moves, you can react with them if you feel them moving. So you just copy their movements. Ball's gonna then bounce. If it doesn't get rebounded by your tall players, this is where you're gonna get a chance to go and get it. Making yourself the barrier between the ball and your defender and keeping them away from the ball to give you the better chance of getting it. That is called boxing out. Sorry for the ass shot. <laughs> We're back. Okay, <clears throat> so the reason that I recommend focusing on defense first is because there are so many skills in basketball that you can practice on your own. You know, whether that's dribbling or shooting or footwork or fitness, you can do that in your garage, at the local park, anywhere. But when it comes to defense, the only time you really get to hone those skills is when you're on the court playing other people. So that's where I reckon you're gonna get the biggest bang for buck and you're gonna see the most success. So remember to get clear on what your team's defensive strategy is, whether that's man or zone. Get low and get wide. Use a denial or a containment approach and remember to box out and use that booty. Now, if you're like me, you're probably worried about injuring yourself. Getting started in sport in your 30s has higher risks because you've got a job to go to, you've probably got a family or commitment to keep up. And so the idea of getting injured is just no bueno. And so if that's you, I would recommend you checking out my Beginner's Sport Strength series, which is a program specifically designed for beginners that's completely free, available on YouTube. And we're gonna work out together you're going to start laying the foundations that you need in regards to muscle strength, tendon stiffness, to be able to handle the demands of sport. So if you're not sure where to start and you're really worried about your injury risk, that's where you want to head. And that's it for today, my kind of sporty people. Thanks for joining and I will catch you in the next one.